Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy to have you along today. Moments away, we're going to be discussing invasive species of plants and what the alternatives is. But first, a message from our good friends at Honey Bee Healthy. Since the year 2000, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has helped beekeepers maintain healthy and thriving hives, attracting pollinators to your garden this year as as simple as hanging a hummingbird feeder with a mixture of sugar water and Honey Bee Healthy Original. You don't, you don't have to be a beekeeper or have honey hives in order to use the product and don't be alarmed to see bees birds butterflies dining together at the feeder pollinators coexist peacefully in harmony in harmony honey bee healthy inc is offering a 10 percent discount code um on eight ounce bottle of honey bee healthy original use code b garden that's b-e-e garden at checkout for more information and to purchase products you can go to honey healthy.com if you've missed any of the coupon codes during the program, uh, you can always go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they are all listed there for you and hyperlinked to make your navigation more uh, accessible. So let's talk about um, some invasive plants. Spe- species, plants, yes. Now, these all grow within the northern portion of the United States, so they should be in your listening area, um, and there's probably more. I'm sure there's more. Oh, there's, there, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we, we only have one segment to uh, select several of these uh, to inform you of. So the first one is purple loose strife. I know I've seen this. Um, so it was introduced to the United States in the early 1800s for... Um, ornamental medicinal uses. I don't know where it came from, but that's okay. Um, it does Europe, Europe, okay, and uh, Asia. Okay, so it produces um, seeds through the wind, or it <laughs> spreads <laughs> seeds through the wind, um, and then they grow at, at the rate of one foot per year. That's that's a lot. So you can that, find that's quicker than most kindergartners. Yeah, really. Um, so, so, some native, so we can see how aggressive these can be. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing about these invasive plants is they are very aggressive. Um, so native alternatives are Blazing Star, which does look a lot like the Purple Loose Strife, American Blue Vervain, and New York Ironweed. These are all great alternatives, and you can plant these, grow these, and they should hopefully um, do a good job. And um, I say against the, the Loose Strife, but... Yeah. As a substitute. As a substitute. Japanese honeysuckle. Yeah, so this is from Eastern Asia, and it is a honeysuckle, um, and it was brought over for ornamental use and er- erosion control. I believe they have deep roots, um, and they are, on the East Coast, they adapt to a lot of different conditions, and oh, it's an aggressive vine that smothers shades and, and will take out vegetation, or like kind of choke out vegetation. So if you have like a, a like well, let's say a hillside that has a bunch of thistles, and you can't mow it, this may be even though it's invasive species, this may be way to choke out a lot of that because honeysuckle has beautiful flowers and very uh, fragrant and br- brings in a tremendous amount of pollinators. Right, and so birds do eat this, and then they spread the seeds. But there's different types of honeysuckles, yeah. and that's. One of these is an alternative, which would be the uh, coral honeysuckle. So you could try that, or the trumpet creeper, another viney plant. So these, if you do a little bit of research, maybe you could find something that would serve the same purpose, if, especially if you are trying to prevent well, erosion. Just, just like we say a lot of times, week after week on the program, if you're looking to change your landscape or add a new plant and you're not 100% certain, the internet, yes, is a wonderful tool. They have the internet on, on computers now. Great thing. But there's nothing more credible than going to your local independent garden center and talking with somebody who knows plants inside and out and, and, and can say, yes, we recommend that. Or you could, but this is going to be the problems you're going to face 5, 10, 15 da- years down the road if you plant this in your yard. Right. They know this. The internet doesn't always know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Norway maple. Norway maple. I feel like we skipped one on our list yeah. here, but that's okay. Norway out maple Egypt. is out of Egypt. Or, 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 e- e- Europe. E- Europe, Europe, not Egypt. We both <laughs> looked at it and said the wrong thing. Right. Um, so they were introduced in early in early or er, 1756 from England. 
um, and they became the, they are a nice shade tree and popular in rural communities. And so what happens is that they choke out native maple trees and they can dominate the landscape, which, I mean, I think all invasive plants can right. do that. Right. Well, maples are fast-growing trees, so I can yeah. see how that could be, you plant one for pretty and then all of a sudden you've seen these what they call helicopter seeds that on these maple trees they drop and, the, the, and then the sweet gums have the gumballs. And you just get trees popping up throughout the yard and the garden. I don't. I don't think we have gumball trees. Sweet, up sweet uh, uh, gumball tree. Yeah. So anyway, some alternatives would be sugar maple and red maple. I love me a maple tree. I think they're beautiful. Do you have trees. a story about a maple tree? I do not. I only have oh, stories oh. about birch birch trees. Birch. Okay. Yeah. So, I was going to climb a birch tree the other day, but I stopped myself. All right. So, um, and then there's English ivy. Um, which is, I think there's like, is that the one? It, that it's has? sweet gum, sweet gum ball, uh maple tree. They drop uh, the fall every winter, and they just it just. Uh, but that's like a more southern thing, isn't it? Oh, well, we had them at the house. Yeah, uh, no matter what, you know, you can drive them over the lawnmower. They don't cut up, and it takes a long time to burn. It's a whole thing. Okay. So English ivy, you can actually purchase this at most big box store garden centers. I don't know if independent garden center sell it or not i've never seen it there um but it's kind of silly because it's extremely invasive and it does date back into the 1700s that it came over here um and it just becomes a thing to plant and we're just basically it's like a staple that people don't know it's dangerous or, or it's, it's bad because it, it grows fast right and it grows under a lot of not the best conditions right yeah. lack of sun is is they're okay with that yes yeah, so i mean the, the plant doesn't require a whole lot of sun yeah, so you could do something like creeping mint, or well, the problem with mint or creeping Charlie, and they're all in the same family. Is once you have it established, or once you put it in the ground, it's it's there forever unless you use a glyphosate, uh, dig up all the soil and and put a pond there or a, a pool or a pond there, or you spray it with glyphosate and completely kill everything in order to get it because they they root underground, they tunnel or, and they're everywhere. Mint and the whole deal. Once you you can't get rid of it, right, right. Yep. So, um, so yeah, you can use uh, creepy mint, which I don't know. Like Joey mentioned, anything says creeping, I would I would shy away from. And then creeping flocks. I think that if you have this this um, English ivy, like growing, taking over, move. I don't know. Just move. <laughs> I don't know, burn your yard down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't that, know, that's like, kind of like, yeah, the, the... You could aggressively pull it up and then, or, like, if, if it really was bothering you that much, you know, like, say you want a yard that doesn't have creeping ivy all over it, because I know these plants, they have, their root system is like a net, it's like uh -huh. a web, and so pulling it up doesn't even always help, it's just like uh, yeah, insanity. Yeah, I know glyphosate would kill, but I don't know if a 2,4-D, because 2,4-D is more for broadleaf, and I don't know if ivy would be considered a broadleaf, or it would, it would even uh, phase it. I'm not sure either, but you could probably smother it out with some some black um, weed barrier cloth, and then, or even just like some black trash bags, and so, then solarize it. Solarize yeah. it, and then you could start over. But that would take up it would take a whole like a whole summer. Ivy is considered a broadleaf weed that can be uh, difficult to remove. So if it's a broadleaf, that 2,4-D would not damage the grass, but it would remove, and that's what people use for that weed and feed to get rid of the dandelions and the lamb's quarter and all the non-grass species uh, when it's, you know, time to, sp oh, spring, we got to put weed and feed on the yard. Don't do that. Okay, we got time for one more here. Okay. So we have, um, uh, what is this called here? Um, kudzu. K U D Z U. And this is. It's a tree. It's a tree. Um, Comes from China, Japan, and the Pacific Islands. Uh, arrived around uh, late quarter, third quarter of 1800s. Um, and it's a predominantly ornamental plant. And later. As for fo uh, forage cover in the southeast. 
Yep, so they they brought it over to help with erosion and then on just de- deforested lands. And basically, they just, like, planted it, like, mad. And then they were like, oh, so that was in the 30s and 40s. And in the 50s, um, this conservationist was like, this is invasive. We should not be doing this. So this is what happens. Is And this is... They planted over a million a, acres of this stuff. It's a lot. This is a small example of as science develops as people learn things things change whether that be something like kudzu whether that be like different gardening practices whether that be like safe canning safe food preservation etc things are always changing so um just because back in the 1940s this was okay that was what 80 years ago 90 no years yeah, ago? yeah, yeah no. however many years ago um, things have changed, so it's just the reality of yeah. life. Yeah, you exactly. don't use the same uh, flip phone that you did thirty years ago. Maybe I want to. I don't. Ah, no. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> well, summer's in full swing now, Holly, and it's uh, time to deal with those nasty Japanese beetles as they are in the process, if not already, wreaking havoc on your gardens. Yeah, so if you're looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts derived from a naturally occurring bacteria soil. Bacteria Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only is Beetle Gone, uh, does it work well, it is the best part about it. It is safe to be used around beneficial insects, just like we were talking about earlier. Ladybugs, butterflies, bees, uh, they have no issue with water toxicity. That's Beetle Gone. That's BeetleGone.com from Phylum Bioproducts. Dot com. You can find those at the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, or just remember, BeetleGone.com. 